Hey guys, welcome back to Behind and Beyond. We are so excited. This is our second season that we're kicking off. We had so much fun last year just breaking down the sermon each week, and we wanted to continue it into this year. So what's in store for you this episode is a sit-down conversation with Dave as we talk about what this brand new series is going to be about. If you're not following along, it's called Around the Table, and we're diving into Jesus and his meals and ministry. This week, we break down what it looks like to have healthy confrontation around our tables. We take a look back on the Dave sermon and talk through what it looked like for Jesus when he had these conversations with people as well. We can't wait to get into it, so let's start the conversation. Okay, Dave, we're back. Here we are. Season two. Yeah. Who would have thought? The network picked up season two. <laughs> Thank goodness. I know. We <laughs> made it back. Watching. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody is. How about this new set, too? I, mean, I know. Headphones, microphones. We're really... In a do you new remember era. Uh, We Are the World? You probably don't remember probably that. Not. I do. I just remember <laughs> that. I loved it. All the artists came together. They had headphones. It was so cool. I feel like I just need a spit guard here. Oh, and I yeah. could be super pro. So. I feel like a DJ a little bit, yeah. which is kind of a dream of mine. So that's it's all coming together. <laughs> You're halfway there. I, so yeah, honestly. Let's go. But yeah, I'm excited to be yeah, here. Me excited too. to be at the table. Yeah. Which we didn't plan, if you'll believe it, to be this literal oh, with yeah. the theme. Around the table. But here yeah, we are. That was great. Yeah. So that's that was great. It kind of is a nice way to connect the yeah, sermon. So new this season, week. new series here at Northway. Super pumped. And here we go. Yeah. yeah. Well, why don't you tell everyone um, just maybe how we got here with Around the Table? I think it's such an exciting new concept for a lot of people. Um, How do we get here and why are you excited about this series for Northway right now? Yeah. So um, I think think for right now, this series definitely ties into the whole concept of rowing back. And um, that can be so intimidating, so inspiring, but so intimidating. Where do I go? What do I do? Uh, We've got tables right in our homes. We can use those. Um, So I spoke in the fall fall 2023, to um, the artist formerly known as Mops. It's called Faith and Motherhood now, yes. Mops, Mothers of Preschoolers. <laughs> and as I, I always try to get bring in something fresh to that group, and there was something about um, the table. felt like God was like reinvigorating you know, moms. They've got tables. They can use them to minister to their kids, to disciple their kids. And that was like the genesis. And then in my men's small group, uh, a buddy, uh, a, a friend of mine, he travels for work. He's a, he's a pilot. Um, and when he's in other towns, he'll visit other churches if he was there on the weekend. And he was at a church where they had an idea, and they he literally, um, not they had an idea, but he was brand new there, and people turned around and invited him that evening to their house wow, for dinner. Yeah. Brand new. He, mm. he doesn't even live there. He's not going to go there. He was just kind of flying in and out. And just kind of those pieces together, and then when you really look, I mean, it's all through the scriptures. It's I love talking about Jesus in creative ways. Mm. And so I think those three merged together, prayed about it, and felt, yeah, this is, this is where we need to go. I didn't know the tie-in to the whole row back concept. That that really came turn of the year. Wow, um, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, so um, I, th- I think it really fits. I'm super excited about this. I mean, there are so many meal moments with Jesus and so many creative things to explore and, and understand, and it really ties into the gospel. So, you know, really everything is about Jesus, and so we're, we're pointing to him, we're seeing how our tables help help us do that, and so here we are. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, what is something you wanted to go into this weekend? I know the intro yeah. is so, I mean, such a big, you know, yeah, responsibility to set up this series. Yeah, you got a limited amount of time. Mm-hmm. I know I got a window into the sermon run through this week. You did, which was so fun, such yeah. an honor. Thank yeah, you for yeah. letting me be there. Yeah, I, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, but um, <laughs> you better earn your keep though. <laughs> that's right. You get kicked out of there. I'm prep my questions. Yeah. Um, but it was so wild. I, it is funny. Yeah. Like I, we pop up on that video call, and and I'm all, I'm nervous. I'm about to run this sermon, and I'm pretty sure I have forty some minutes of material. And I'm like, I don't, I can't. <laughs> Need to be at like thirty in order to. It, it always grows in the moment. Uh, and then there's Rebecca. I'm like, oh, here's another voice. Here's another <laughs> set of staring eyes to, to criticize. Um, but I did. I had too much content, and and we love working together and getting good feedback. And so that group is wonderful to help. Um, but I had stuff I was super excited about. It just, there just wasn't time. I needed to really focus on what I needed to focus on. Um, but the intros, they're big. I love yeah. to kick off series because you can pitch like the big picture idea mm-hmm. for what we're, where we're going and why we're doing that. 
But um, I definitely had to cut. As you can see, I have notes in front of me. <laughs> I love um, We love the notes. Yeah, I had a full yeah. section because you think about Jesus and the tables. Um, that's not the only time food shows up. Mm-hmm. Like, like when you go all the way back in the garden, the very first command from God was where to eat. And, and there was like, it was like a buffet. Yeah. It was, it was like Ponderosa. Yeah. You the don't dream. remember Ponderosa? <laughs> Golden Corral, whatever <laughs> is the giant buffet. Uh-huh. I, I don't like buffets, by the way. It just, I, I'm not a big buffet guy, but when you look it's at it. It's hard the, to do well. It's fair. It is. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. Everything's kind of average yeah. and there's Temperature, a, lot of, a lot of people. Yeah. We need to get back on cue to what we're supposed to be talking yeah, about. Yeah. Sorry. I could talk about food a lot. So the so garden hard. <laughs> is all these trees except for one. So like the very first command, God said, sit down. I want to eat with you. Yeah. And he's there with them. Mm. And it's like telling us, like he's using the table and meals to, to communicate who he is. He's a present God. He's a, he's a providing God. He's generous. I love that. Mm. And then, you know, of course, we know about the fall. They, they, they had to eat from that one tree. There was something about, you know, sin entered the world. And uh, then through the Old Testament, all these feasts. And Leviticus 23, there's seven different feasts, Passover and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, and I have them listed here, Mm -hmm. Feast of the Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, there's seven of them. Um, And they're these things that remind the people of who God is and what what it means to be his people. But also, I didn't know this until I was studying, all of those feasts point to Jesus. No way. Can you go into that? They're a foreshadowing of Jesus. So think about Passover, um, commemorating and celebrating the, the final plague, leaving mm-hmm. Egypt. They spread the blood of the lamb on their doorposts. The angel of death passes over them. Mm-hmm. Jesus comes, lives, is crucified. He dies. He is our Passover lamb. Death can now pass over us. So it's a pointing and a foreshadowing mm-hmm. of God's provision, even in the face of our sin. Like the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Um, leaven is often a sign in a, in a symbol of sin. It's, it's a it's a pointing of Jesus' sin, sinless life. Mm. The Feast of the Trumpets. When Jesus returns for his bride, the church, there's going to be some trumpets mm. blared there. It's all this pointing of, and it's like God saying, hey, I didn't forget about you. Yeah. And I'm going to use the table to remind you of that. And then, of course, New Testament, Jesus teaches. There's parables. He teaches about feasts. And then Revelation is a picture of the, the wedding feast, the mm-hmm. reunion, the marriage, uh, you know, the, the, the reconnection of the bride and the groom, Jesus and the church. And it's described as a wedding feast. It's a picture of what heaven is going to look like. And wow. so yeah. I was super pumped. We just didn't have time to go yeah. into all of that. And it was just this, it's just this... Um, demonstration of how God um, communicates his love in ways that we understand and can mm-hmm. access. Because yeah. once again, everyone knows food, yeah. not high-end food or low-end food, or, or it just we all know what to do at a table. Yeah. And God sits down and communicates that way. I think it's really beautiful. Yeah. And it says something about him. Yeah. I love that because I thought it was so um, just powerful. And I never really connected this to, I think it's easy to think of you know, oh, when we invite someone to church, like they're, they'll feel welcomed. And like, mm-hmm. yes, that's our goal. That's our hope as yep. we create of welcoming places for people. But yeah. I think it's a great um, reminder. Like think about your table, like yeah. the place where that's where you can start that relationship with someone too. I mean, we want to invite yeah. people to church as well, but it's a great um, way to look at how Jesus did his ministry, like, you know, mm-hmm. the method. And I think we can get really locked into the words, the things we need to remind people of, but how did Jesus do that? And he sat yeah. with people. Yeah. He was Je- with them. Jesus was a ministry of teaching. He taught a ton. I-, I also see in there, between the lines, a ministry of being, being with people. Sometimes we worry so much of, what am I going to say? Holy Spirit will remind you of what to say. Jesus promises us that. But sometimes we're not sure what the Holy Spirit is leading us to say because we're not being with people that need to hear what the Spirit is trying to mm, say. That's good. And yeah. the table is a is a wonderful disarming environment uh, for that to happen. It doesn't have to just be in your house. Yeah. It can be a table at Panera. It can be a table at Chipotle, uh, McDonald's, whatever. Name the restaurant. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's gathering together. And I, I love that picture of um, the word companion, together in bread. Mm-hmm. When we break bread together, we start to become friends. Yeah, so, yeah it's yeah. powerful. Yeah. Really good stuff. Um, could you talk a little bit more about um, the menus and venues and how we need to focus on what's most important? How, um, what does it look like practically? Like for someone like me, like I love hosting people. Okay. I love like having people into my home and welcoming them. But, you know, I can also get into a Martha mindset of, you mm. know, 
if everything's not perfectly clean and the food yeah, isn't whatever, good. like what are some... good for the soul. Right? <laughs> exactly. Going, this is good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, primaries and secondaries. My yeah. wife, Brooke, I said it, um, she's gifted when it comes to hospitality. She can stage a beautiful environment. And and I would say this, I, I wanted to, you know, when I, when I run the tape back... I'm like, man, I hope I didn't communicate that if you have the gift of hospitality, you you are secondary. No. R- go with it. Yeah. Lay out a spread for people. Welcome people. Express aesthetically that, that people are welcomed. It, it's wonderful to be invited to a table that's yeah. beautifully set up. Just don't let that be the reason why you don't or can't host people. Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes if you have that gift, you think, well... Um, it's not perfect enough, so then I, I can't yet have them over. Mm. And so that idea of perfect enough, secondary things just can't become primary things. But secondary things can be really, really wonderful. Yeah. Uh, we do. We love aesthetics. They they open up our hearts even more so. Yeah. Um, and then if, if that's not your gift, um, don't shortchange or sell yourself short when it comes to hosting people at your home. Because it, it doesn't ultimately matter. Yeah. They're not coming for the decorations. Very That's true. like when I open up yeah. a gift, the, the packaging is wonderful. What's in the gift is most important. Yeah. So yeah, totally. Primary, secondary. But if you're good at that secondary thing, be good at it. Yeah. Be I love food that tastes good. Yeah. It's like Who doesn't? it's yeah. extra icing on the cake. It's not the cake though. Yeah. So yeah. We got invited That's over good. last night. We went with some friends from the church and we hung out and two hours. We talked, mm. we laughed, um, we, we, we shed tears, yeah. we spoke into each other's lives just naturally and got to know each other more and more and more. And I know, just think about it this way from a secondary perspective. So last night I can remember what we ate and I might remember a little bit of what it looked like, but a week from now, I'm still going to remember what they said to me mm. and how I felt. I'm not really going to remember what it tasted like the food. So and true. what was on yeah. the table. Those things fade. So yeah. um, primaries and secondaries. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That's yeah. a good good reminder. Cheers. Cheers, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to move into a little bit of what we promised to talk about on the podcast this week from uh, My shameless sermon. plug for yes. Behind and Beyond. Yes, I appreciate it. Thank you. You know, yeah, it's a small production over here. <laughs> um, but let's talk about, I think we've covered well, like, what it looks like to host people, getting through the barriers, mm-hmm. um, and em- like embracing what God wants to do through you and through um, your table. But what does it look like to have healthy confrontation? Because yeah. I think maybe a barrier for a lot of people is, you know, I'd love to have these conversations with my family, but you get us all around a table, you know, you know what's going to come out. So right. maybe my thought was, could we talk through confrontation with people um, close to you that you know and love? And then what about confrontation with someone maybe you invite over the first time and then you run into those barriers like how do you approach those conversations with grace and truth together yeah so grace and truth is the goal john describes jesus as full of grace and full of truth so it's not 50 50 Mm -hmm. it's all at all times Uh, we need the holy spirit to um to we need to be walking with the spirit and praying and making sure it's God's spirit leading us, not our own spirit. You said a phrase, healthy confrontation. Mm-hmm. So what does healthy confrontation look like? like I, I think know. you got def- to yeah. define that. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Is it, um, okay, I got to confront my mom and dad. I want to do it in a way that they'll still like me. Is that the definition of health? No, probably not. <laughs> Is it, I want to do it in such a way where we can talk about this and things will go back to normal and never, mm-hmm. never be different or weird? Is that health? Because we all have a lot of different pictures of what yeah. health looks like. Um, grace and truth to me is a, is a bit more on the biblical side of yeah. confrontation. I think God honoring. Um, I, think, I think that grid of kingdom fruit that I talked about mm-hmm. is important. Um, I love when I watch Sports Center, especially when they cover the NBA. They say, no risk it, no biscuit, uh-huh. <laughs> right? A lot of times we're afraid of risk, so risk yeah. holds us back. Uh, someone asked me, they're like, hey, what did you mean by risk? It's like, what, what, am I, like, what cost am I counting up versus am I, am I seeking to honor God? Am I yeah. seeking to reach people with the love, grace, and truth of God? And so you see that in that, that passage, that Luke 7 passage. Jesus said, Simon... I have something to say to you. It, it, I wonder if Simon would have said, no, thanks. Would Jesus have just kept going? 
Mm, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm presuming myself on that moment, but yeah. I just see in this moment a beautiful entry point into something hard that he needed to say. And I, I, I think in that moment, we have to keep in mind, Jesus then pointed, pointed towards love, acts of love, and he was calling Simon towards understanding God more. It, it, a lot of times when we confront people, we're trying to make sure you think I'm right. We're trying so to true. win the argument. Yeah, I, I want you to understand who God is more. Hmm. And I want to make sure, like, really, that's the relationship I want to win. Hmm. A lot yeah. of times when we talk about the relationship, I talk about, well, I want to say it in a way so you still like me. Sometimes that's the risk. Like, yeah. eventually in time, I believe God reconciles, and but there might be a gap between you and me. If I have to confront you with something, you might not like me, but I need to make sure I'm doing it in a loving way that I'm, um, I'm offering, hey, Rebecca, there's something I'd love to share with you. And if you're not there in a space, sometimes I need to pause and wait until the better moment, until the better time so you could receive it. Mm. Um, so there's a lot to this. It's art. Yeah, it's it not science. Art. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sometimes it comes with bumps and bruises. Yeah. That worship song we sing, I forget the name of the, the title of it, but it's Scars and Struggles mm-hmm. on the way, but yeah. with joy, I'll have to say. I'm probably butchering this. It's probably Chris <laughs> Tomlin's song. Um, you were faithful. He points yeah. to the faithfulness of God. And so he's faithful when we get it wrong. He's faithful when we get it right. Mm. So uh, there's just a beautiful way Jesus brought about the truth and it pointed, it pointed Simon to who God, because he wanted to reach Simon. He didn't want to belittle Simon. Yeah. He didn't want Simon to walk away and say, well, Jesus was right. He, he wanted Simon's heart to really understand that he was being self-righteous. And he was ignoring um, how much he had been forgiven of. Yeah. And so, so it's plank and speck a lot of times. Yeah. Um, and I'm not being weak on truth or, or overly strong <laughs> on grace. I'm, I'm like... We need to be led by the Spirit in those moments, yeah. and we need to pray. And um, every time I think I've done confrontation well, there has been peace and confidence that God is leading me to do it. Hmm. When it's not done well, I often rushed it. I forced it. I was more interested in being seen as right than helping them see God more more rightly, hmm. according to the Scriptures. So, That's really good. Yeah. Wow. I feel like that can... That is, you're giving marriage advice, you're giving family advice, like that. Wow, what a what a principle to. Yeah, and I out. haven't yeah. got it right with Brooke all the time. There's a lot of times where I'm like, let me just say this and get on with us. <laughs> no, yeah, I wasn't worried about us. Yeah, I was worried about me, mm-hmm. and I wasn't really worried about like this issue being um, resolved in a biblical way. I was, I was more like, I want to get on to something. This is annoying me. Can we just, mm-hmm. can I just tell you and fix you? <laughs> That doesn't go well in a marriage. Mm, no, no one wants to be no. fixed. <laughs> no one's a project. Yeah. They want to be loved. Yeah. They want to belong. So, And emphasizing that relationship over your own right is huge. I think that even ties back into our New Year sermons about relinquishing rights. That's a huge yes. connection there, too. Yes. I just yes. now put together in this moment. but yeah. I think yeah. a good thing for us as humans, we're not Jesus, but when we're going into conflict, we, we really need to ask God, search my heart. What are my insecurities right now? Why am I doing this? Is this for them or for me? Mm. We need to, like, again, plank and speck. Yeah. We, need to, we need to really make sure our hearts are pure before the Lord and then proceed uh, and adjust along the way. Yeah. Yeah. It's not good. easy. No. <laughs> no. I've never met someone that said, man, I love conflict. <laughs> it's easy every time and it always works. <laughs> That's why it's called conflict. Yeah. It feels like war, yeah. um, but it has to be done in the name of the Lord. So. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. I think we're all going to take a lot of notes from that into our over this whole series, too. I think that's just a great thing to keep diving in and exploring and seeing, you know, where is God calling us to grow um, for sure. What um, as we start to wrap up, I would love to know, maybe just cast some vision for us over this whole series. What are you hoping to see God do? Um, And how have you felt him speak to you already about this series? Just as we get ready for next week. Even. Yeah, so parents are always on my heart. They they, mm. they just are. Yeah. Um, the, the table, being Italian, I, I think I said this, I think it was a cultural thing, and it became a biblical thing as my yeah. parents you know, grew in their faith. Um, such a formidable space for me in my life. Mm. And moms and dads, there is such a pool 
on us to prioritize everything else and we we miss and we neglect like the the simple sacred thing that that Harvard even says our kids are longing for. Yeah. They are. And so there's definitely a, a pull and a call, not a convicting finger wagging, but my hope is an inspiring call back to our tables for moms and dads, mm. regular time together. Um, there's also a call for not just moms and dads. There are a lot of, a lot of people. So I, my heart wants us to look around on Sundays when we're gathered in our buildings and see who doesn't belong. Who maybe should I just take a risk yeah. and try and reach and yeah. invite them to lunch with me? Crazy. Hmm. But, yeah. but how much would that, would that matter to mm. someone? So um, seeing people differently. When Jesus said, Simon, do you see her? Yeah, I love that. Because yeah. we miss people. Oh, yeah. I mean, we just, we just miss them all around, and they're, they're desperate to be seen. Mm. So, uh, and then there's going to be a challenge in the series coming up for us um, to, to use our tables, to invite some neighbors and friends over to our homes and um, see God show up mm-hmm. and see, see what he'll do. So um, is it evangelism? Yeah. Is it discipleship? Yeah. I, th- I think it's, it's stepping more towards the heart of God. Mm-hmm. That's, what, that's what my hope and, and desire is for the series. So we're going to start looking at, at his moments. Next week, we're going to be looking at um, the very first miracle, Jesus and the, the wedding at Cana. So... Mm-hmm. Uh, meal moment. So yeah, pretty cool. We're excited. Yeah. Well, thanks for your time, Dave. <laughs> Thank as you. As always. Yeah. If you had a jaw, a hand in this set, like it's awesome. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> the you. headphones. Yes. I can oh, yeah. hear. It's good. We're we're pumped. So. Behind and beyond. Yes, absolutely. Thank you guys for listening, for watching, um, wherever you're streaming, and we hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Mm-hmm.